What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of Bullets, Barbells, and Barbecue. Uh, I'm your host, Brett. I got Matt here, back in action. Still drinking. Got Tanner the head. Um, Chris is MIA again this episode. Um, recording from the Mecca, Omaha Barbell. Um, our show partners here, we got Elite Nutrition Omaha, EliteNutritionOmaha.com. Use code B3 for 10% off. Go to the store and yell B three extra loud when Steve's working. <laughs> you get two shakers if you if you <laughs> if you can piss Steve off by yelling B three, you get two. There you go. Uh, Rosewood block to make the best cutting boards in the barbecue game. Uh, we have ours here front and center on the table. Um, this is their brisketeer with the custom um, B three logo on it. And that's epoxy filled. They fill it with epoxy. Yep. Man, that thing looks good. Yeah, turned out really good. Yeah. Um, they I, I have this is my third personal board of theirs and i've never been let down so and you don't have to get the epoxy fill you can just have um like the one i got matt just has his name on it but they didn't epoxy fill it so it's just a little that epoxy fill though looks pretty good yeah they do crazy go on their website look look at their uh instagram page like the stuff they do is pretty yeah pretty incredible they they make all of meat church's boards uh so but yeah Check them out, uh, rosewoodblock.com. Use B3 at checkout for 10% off. Uh, but this, uh, this episode we're going to talk about this last, uh, last week in, in sports. Well, been a little bit of controversy, and, there's, and it was signing day. Yes, for there will college. be signing day on Wednesday. There will be, yeah, sorry. Yeah. There's supposed signing days, but I still don't believe anything until the first game of the season. I see who's on the field. Signing days are a contract. Do you know what I did find out, though? That if you're a portal transfer, there's no, there's no paper you sign. You sign no papers. Like, you transfer to the school, and you show up, and then you get a scholarship. But there's no signing day for portals. Hmm. So there's no, like, obligation to... Nope. And you just show up and <laughs> and get a scholarship. But, you know, before we talk about signing day, I think we should do a flashback tour. I told you it was all about buying players. When Matt was here. I was. I was actually in the same seat. The same seat. And I said you can't buy every player. And, and then I did the cannot. math for you. And I said, if Nebraska took just a $500 donation per seat, which is a low end, that's $44 million. You can buy a lot of players for $44 million. There's other things that the university has to do. Like what? Like The volleyball team wins all the time, and they get way less donations than that. <laughs> By the way, Nebraska women's volleyball, that's awesome. They're going to the national championship. Mm-hmm. Yep. They rolled they through Pitt. Should, should I just say that they won it since it's going to come out after? <laughs> Do yeah, you think, fair. you know what Amber and I were talking about? Did, so, oh, Heimlich Hamburger, the Nebraska quarterback, he dates the chick on the team, that yeah. number was 27 or whatever, she, I can't think of her name. Do you think she'll break up with him because she's more successful? <laughs> 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 like, I, like, I noticed you're not a starter. And, yeah. Uh, Did you I, guys watch the UNO-UNL volleyball game? Was the that one the one that, that was the South record at? Yeah, yeah, that they did. Out uh-uh. the so they're, they're playing, and like, UNO is good, but. They're not Division they're one. They're not that good. And they're so, Division one. Yeah, they're still Division One. Like they, they made it. They, that, that, they got that's crazy. Round that, one. Are they all, Division One Double yeah. A or something? Or are they no, different? No, all Same. three Nebraska UNO, teams. Creighton and UNL all made. All made the tournament this made year. Made the tournament. Like oh, volleyball. Oh. Like we're a volleyball yeah. state. Um, but so they're playing against UNL and they're doing stuff. And then our our big hitter, or from UNL, just fucking murders the ball past this group of gals at the at UNL. And like it bounces off the. And anyways, and then the camera pans to UNO to see how they're going. And one of these UNL gals turns around and her eyes are giant. When she's like. They hit so fucking hard. <laughs> <laughs> like Nebraska volleyball, and I like I I love watching volleyball. I think volleyball is a fun sport to watch. It's really fast paced. Without the booty shorts, it's still yeah. super fun. Well, did you see in, in the game the other night that that pit game? Talking about the shot, that girl from Nebraska took a shot straight to the face on that block, and like he didn't even phase her. No. If that was an NBA game, that dude would have been out for the season. He would have been laying down. <laughs> like oh, if that was Le- if that was LeBron, he'd have died. Yeah. He well, died right like martial artists who train their shins on like trees. Yeah. The volleyball girls just take volleyballs out. Dude, that girl, like, she didn't even it. blink. Like, <laughs> yeah. it didn't even fucking face no, her. No, you watch them to jump up to like block shots. They're looking at the ball, eyes wide open the entire time. Yeah. I was like, dude, that girl didn't even right. get phased. Yeah. Literally, like, no. like Draymond Green, like, spun around and hit that dude. And like, he just went down. And I was like, this is just like the worst thing ever. Yeah. Yeah, it's like watching Chiefs fans cry about the game. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good swing on that one. That was. Fucking Kadarius Tony can't do anything right. No, here's the thing. They have been calling it more. They've it's statistically they're calling offsides more. They're not gonna get it every time. They threw the flag before the play happened. It's not like they waited. 
And like, let's do a fucking flashback to the Chiefs Jets game, where the official waited until the Jets intercepted the ball, and then threw the flag for a pass interference that was ten yards down the field. The Chiefs have had plenty of fucking penalties go in their favor. The Vikings game the week after that, they fucked the Vikings on that. All teams have things that go their way and don't go their way. But the let's be honest, the Chiefs have gotten plenty of game changing calls at the end of the game. Sure. I'm here's the thing. But I think they're more I think they're I think Patrick Mahomes and those guys, I think he's more pissed because he doesn't understand losing two games, three games out of four, having a down season. Like I don't think he's used to this. I, he's pissed, and I and I actually like the fact that he's pissed. I don't. But he was, did underthrow and overthrow plenty of people in yeah, that game too. So he needs to take. But, but the, the Chiefs receivers, his, the Chiefs receivers, have the most drops in the league this year. Uh, that's their own fault. They had Tyreek Hill, traded they him. They had Juju Smith Schuster, got rid of him. I mean, and then you're going to go on a press conference after the game when you've had time to shower and chill out, and you're going to throw the officials under the bus again. Who have been your biggest ally your entire career? <laughs> he complains and gets more calls in his favor than Brady and Rodgers ever did. And then Andy Reid, who is the head coach, should know better, does the same thing. Andy Reid, I should not be throwing stones from his glass house. If he wants to look at his parenting career, he's a pretty shitty human. <laughs> <laughs> if both of your kids are shitbags, you're probably a bad parent. He invested so much in coaching. Yeah, you when your when your kid gets drunk and kills somebody who's got a kid or is pregnant or wasn't it was the baby in the car with her? I can't remember. Yeah, and then your other kid is kind of a piece of shit. Mm, maybe it's not like throw stones minutes. from your glass house. Just be a shitty human and be quiet about it. He was just very dedicated to his career. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. but I wouldn't throw stones. <laughs> I, here's the thing: like the Chiefs are. Uh, I told you this a lot. I told you this when the Chiefs had a had a good record when they were eight and one or whatever, eight and two. I was like, they're not that good. They're they're not. They're, no, they're the problem is the pieces. AFC is just not very good right now. No, I I honestly think if the Bills get in the playoffs, they have a chance. I like Josh Allen a lot because I've had a soft spot for Josh Allen since he got fucked in the draft. Yep. When his draft stock went down to the second round because of a tweet he made like 13 years prior. Yeah, something stupid. Some you know, because um, I don't I don't think the Dolphins are as good as they look either. They're very fast paced, but if you have a good defense that can shut down Tua, like you can't. Well, playoffs. You know how the playoffs go. Like their it, coach is hilarious. The Dolphins' coach is hilarious. Fa- fa- my my favorite coach in the NFL. Guy that, cracks me up when he's mic'd up. And he's like, dude, I wanted to pick six, not a pick lay on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> or when uh, when they're who I can't remember who they were playing, and they returned the hail mary for a touchdown, and he like ran off the field. He's like, oh shit, we got the extra point. <laughs> yeah, he's and, and Tyreek Hill. I mean, that guy's a freak of nature. I mean, he opened last summer. He entered that that U.S. trial or whatever for the open hundred and like placed so, he didn't like train for it. And he placed in the open hundred. So they, uh, they were just showing this the other day. Tyreek Hill has more receiving yards than like seven NFL teams, all their receivers. <laughs> yeah. He's, they, they have a lot of skill players down there and I'm not saying the dolphins aren't a contender. I just don't know if they're going to go to the super bowl. Yeah. The whole like basketball on grass thing's kind of hard to pull off in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's the one thing I think the Chiefs do have a chance also because they do have a great defense. Yeah. And, a- I mean, and, and we'll say what you want about Andy Reid. He's a great coach. Uh, He's a great coach. What happened in Philadelphia? Mm. The, the Nothing. They didn't win shit in Philadelphia. He didn't win a Super Bowl. Yeah, they made it to what, three? Uh, did they make it to three? Not when he was the coach. They won with Doug. Uh, what's his name? No, they did. They make it to three or four AFC cha- or NFC championships when he oh, was a coach. Well, everybody, that's like with a, Donovan. That's like Matt. a that's like a bowl game. That's not the national championship. When was the last time the Cowboys made it to an NFC championship? Um, like it's 90? been a while, but they still have five Super Bowls. Ratings are temporary. Championships are forever. You know, I think it's hilarious that you talk shit about like, Nebraska, like relying on old wins, relying on old wins, and like your Super Bowl in Nebraska's last national championship might have been in the same year. I probably were, <laughs> <laughs> but I I'm also can saying. admit that when the Cowboys are shitty, yeah, well, Nebraska's never shitty; they're always just one year away. They're working. On it. Cowboys <laughs> have been Next paper. Year. Cowboys have been paper champions forever. <laughs> I will say that Dak is playing his ass off this year. I blame you know you look at it like today, which is whatever the day, the 16th, the Chargers fired their head coach today. 
but their offensive coordinator is Kellen Moore, who was in Dallas last year. And <laughs> Dallas and Dak had statistically his worst season last year. He had like the most interceptions, and Kellen Moore was the offensive coordinator. And then he went to San Diego, and weird. San Diego sucks balls now. And Justin Herbert's a great quarterback. Uh, L.A.? Or sorry, yeah, L.A. Chargers. L.A. Whatever. Chargers, yeah. Yeah, I'm old yeah. school. They're I, San Diego. Yeah. Like uh, the Rams are still in St. Louis? Yeah. Well, they were in L.A. originally when I first started watching football, <laughs> though the Rams were in L.A. Um, but, yeah, maybe it's Kellen Moore. Speaking of assistant coaches, did you see who the wide receiver coach for the Dolphins is? I uh-huh. think it's Wes Welker. Somebody <laughs> told me that. <laughs> yeah. The mustache? Dude, like, that's awesome. Like, Wes Welker was one of those guys who, like, just had to work his ass off to be there. Right. Just had to work his ass off because he is not the most physically gifted person out there. Because he was talking about the difference between Randy Moss and Tyreek Hill. That Tyreek Hill can run every route in the route tree. Tyreek Tyree Hill runs everything perfect. And Randy was just... Randy was a freak, and not to take anything away from Randy Moss, right. but you could just you could just be like, "Oh, Randy's down there somewhere. I'm going to yeah. throw it up." There. Put it in the air; he'll find it. Yeah. Well, and I think Randy Moss in that era was what changed the receiving quarterback game because we were talking about. I remember his mania. We were talking about the old quarterback challenge. Oh yeah. On All Star Weekend. Yep. When it was like Troy Aikman and Dan Marino, you know, and they'd have that moving like bullseye target, and they'd have chalk on the tip of the ball. Do you remember that, Matt? And those guys would get it like on the edge of the bullseye every time like the accuracy of those guys now it's like they throw it 20 yards into like a fucking five foot circle and they're like god look how good he is because <laughs> the receivers now if you can get it within three yards of those guys they're probably going to go get it well they didn't like randy moss was a freak calvin johnson was a freak and i think those guys changed the game actually but, of receiving yeah, but now you have jefferson and you have Ch- uh, chase and you just have so many of those guys that are just like freaks of nature that can just go up and like high point a ball and like take it away from defenders. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's impressive. But yeah, I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you who's going to be in the Super Bowl. I don't have like the slightest clue. I mean, I I the 49ers are really good right now out of the NFC. The the Niners are the most complete team. If it wasn't for their quarterback, I think they'd be better. Yeah, I mean, I don't I I don't, I don't dislike I, Brock Purdy. I, don't I just don't know good. if he's as good as that system makes him look. But that's when you okay, have, though. When you have Christian McCaffrey and Debo, right? Like, but you know, look at look at look at, like going back to old Cowboy history. Like, Troy Aikman had probably the, arguably the biggest and best offensive line in history. He had Emma Smith. He had Michael Irvin. Like, how are you not good? Was was Troy Aikman really that good, or was the team around him? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, I think it's like like they, Dan Marino always had terrible people around him, and he was still really good. Yeah, I mean there are. I mean the the Cowboys back then built like they they built the franchise. I mean, it was they had every piece, yeah. that, and even on the defense they had every piece. And then they went and got Dion. <laughs> to, to <laughs> fucking Dion. Yeah. What well, didn't Dion play in back to back Super Bowls? One for the Niners, one for the Cowboys. Yeah, he was basically like a hired gun. Yeah. Like basically, he came in, they win the Super Bowl, and then he, he left was like it. the first free agent, like the first like free agent, free agent. And you know what's crazy is uh, I'm a big obviously when Dion played, I'm a huge fan. Like. And I remember when he signed with Dallas, it was on the front page of like Sports Illustrated, like, because he did like a five year, like $35 million contract. Yeah. Total. <laughs> and it, like the headline was like, is this guy worth $35 million? I'm like, dude, $35 million is like what like Dak Prescott makes in a year now. I, well, I think, uh, I think Mahomes' contract is like $50 million a year, and he's not the highest paid. Yeah, he gets a half a billion. There was a, didn't a baseball player just signed a $700 million contract? Okay, so apparently. But it's like, Backloaded. Oh, yeah. So, d- are you guys familiar with Bobby Bonilla Day? Oh, he's still getting paid. You know, do you know King Griffey Jr. is still getting paid? Yeah, like two million a year. Good. So, so I Bobby signed baseball from him. <laughs> Bobby Bonilla on on like July first, I think, of every year gets a like one point two million from the Mets. From the Mets, like o- Otani is who you're talking about. He is going to be getting paid from the Dodgers. It, like his grand, sixty-eight million his dollars gran- a year. His grandchildren are going to be getting paid. I thought it was a ten. So he's a contract for ten years, and then a ten-year payout afterwards, plus interest. And I don't know when the interest clock starts. So, like, like Bobby Bonilla's interest is on like ten or fifteen million dollars. That's what he's getting paid on. Like that's why he's still getting paid. It's it's on this little teeny chunk of money. Yeah. It's not on like six hundred and fifty yeah. million dollars of money. Because yeah. I think Otani's only what's he getting paid two million dollars a year? Seven hundred million dollar contract, two million dollars a year for ten years, and then the rest gets paid. And then sixty eight million dollars. Million dollars a year 
for 10 years and he has interest on it yeah you're gonna have otani day until like 2400 it's just wild that you can backload something like that baseball so it's like almost all guaranteed money if not all it's all it's all guaranteed. and at least i mean those dudes can play for like 20 years too i mean like so tom tom here in the morning like who's he played minor league ball, right? Yeah, but he's also like the fucking rain man when it comes to sports. Man, you do not want to argue sports with that guy. Well, a lot but, of things. He's very – Tom is very well educated. Yeah, but he, he's more than well educated. I think he has a photographic memory. Like, I don't know. I, oh, yeah. And he's uh, – yeah, he'll like – Dedic memory, right? Yeah, huh? Dedic yeah, memory. I and I feel like that dude reads like a book a day. He – so him and Norman were arguing about something, and like he went back and pulled – like he had the stats of re, like receiving yards and touchdowns for an Alabama game three years ago. And I'm like uh, – he's like, no. He's like he had four – like the uh, it was Alabama-Tennessee. He like knew the scores like 52-49, and that Tennessee receiver had four touchdowns. And but I'm like, the fuck are you talking about? But he was saying that – um that he's like, he's like, oh, Tony's going to end up with ownership in the Dodgers because they're not going to be able to pay him. Uh, that makes sense. That they're going to convert it over to ownership. Uh, he'll be a minority owner in some way, hmm. shape, or form. Hmm. Which makes sense. Yeah. And if Tom yeah. says That's something wild. like, pretty much, it, if, if Tom's talking about something, like, yeah, it's probably right. Yeah, yeah the, money's, the money's just getting crazy. And I don't know what the stopping point will be. There isn't one. They're making money. Yeah, as long as they keep making money, like, so um, before we uh, get too far down this other road, you said you were talking about Me Church. They make all the boards for Me Church. Uh, yeah, Rosewood, Rosewood does, yeah. Does. I have I have hit a couple Me Church recipes over the last like week. Like I did that smoked meatloaf. That was pretty solid. Funny, I tried it. Right? Oh, dude, it was freaking good. I liked it. it. The next day, it dried out a little bit, which is fine. But And I, I might change a couple things, but like that's, that's you not... You know what? I mic- think whenever I microwave stuff I've made... I have like the Tupperware with the snap on lid. I just keep the lid and I just move it over just a little bit so it kind of steams it back in. Yeah. And I think that always seems to help keep some moisture back in it. The only yeah. thing I really want to ask old Mr. Pittman is like how he gets his time. No, his time was right on this. Really? Dead on. Like within five minutes. Everything else. Like he has some where he makes them on the same exact Traeger I have. and Like the exact same Timberline XL. And I follow his shit. Say like I even I even paused the video to see what height his rack was on, <laughs> and I followed it, and they were still off. Yeah, like this, one, this one was, was, like, was, was within five was it was within five minutes of. Well, we'll find out. I'm doing shotgun shells today. I got them in the fridge right now, so I'll try those yeah. the big manicotti noodles stuffed with. But I'm changing it because uh, I did ground chicken and I did ground uh, and it was. Um, Sweet Italian chicken sausage. What I found with the shotgun shells, and you probably found the same thing, is that bacon has to be over every part of that noodle. Yeah. I tried so, to stretch it out, and let it, but yeah. so yeah, I haven't made it yet. I'm gonna, they're in the fridge right now because he said let them sit for at least four hours, if not overnight. Yeah. So so like if you have like this much of noodle yep. outside the bacon, it's just going to be hard as a fuck. It, it's, like, it's like nothing yeah. happened to it. Yeah, so like, it's disgusting. I probably just made cut them four off. or five yeah. times, and I wrap from like – because they're at that angle, and so I wrap from where – the angle stops to where the other angle is on the end, and then I just take those in and cut them off and like give them to the dogs because like, yep. they the yeah the shell just gets a little crunchy. But I have wondered if you boiled the shells for well, he said you can do minutes. something. You can cook them like first before a, you stuff them just a little bit to get them soft, like enough. a little bit of like a parboil or whatever yeah, you call it. Like that's what he half, talks about in the video. Yeah, halfway, but like boil them just a little bit and then stuff them and wrap them. I mean, I really don't know what parboil is, but my wife's a great cook, and I think she's used that term before, so I'm gonna go and throw it out. I, uh, no, I'm I'm just slowly waiting for my in with the great people at Rosewood Block that I can be like, hey, can you get Pittman into our podcast? Yeah, right. Because they got a connection. He just had a re-grand opening of a store down in Waxhatchee. He moved it, and they were down there. So I'm just waiting for the fucking right time to slide in there on that deal. I'm like, hey. <laughs> like, I know. Can you at least get him to return a fucking message to me? <laughs> I know you said that he wasn't like a great competition barbecuer. Yeah, he didn't do like a lot of competition, and I don't know how well he did. Yeah, he always talks about getting like second, third, and some stuff, but but, but competition man, barbecue, I, I don't care because like, it doesn't taste the same. Well, just like Blaine said, like it's a different thing. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like he said, you throw the brisket away, you slice your pieces, and you throw the rest in the trash. Yeah, because you can't eat it because it's over like too much. It'd but be, it has to be that perfect over. bite. Yeah. So for a bite, it's great, but you yeah. wouldn't eat a whole yeah. serving of yeah. brisket. Um, I just think it's like as far as. Like the way he puts a recipe down, it all is a recipe. I feel like he does it like, like a guy would do it. Like, here's the idea, and you just kind of do what you want. Right. 
I will say that meat Mitch barbecue sauce fucking it's legit. Fucking, it's calm. he's got a couple. You did like the womp sauce or you did the other one? I have no idea which the, one I did. Bare I just naked, said meat there's Mitch. A bare naked. One. I did not do that one. That's a little bit sweeter. There's like a womp. So like there's bare naked womp and then there's womp. The womp has like more of a bite to it and that one's great on like any kind of beef even putting it on like brisket and stuff like that stuff's really good yeah and like his his seasonings like but i i'm one of those people i've i have like every spice in my cabinet because i make everything i'm like well this holy cow or this holy gospel or whatever is pretty freaking good i don't think honey, I hog. Need honey hog honey hog is fucking so i did the hot the honey hog things. on my yeah. shotgun shells so honey we'll hog and hot out. honey hog are good i like honey hog hot honey hog Voodoo. I like voodoo. And fajita. And their their W sauce. Their W sauce. Well, that's not his, but yeah. Yeah, but the, the, the W yeah, sauce and then the Fireshire, man, like you can call it Worcestershire sauce. It is not Worcestershire no, sauce. It's, I, it's I mean, not sauce at all. That's the only stuff I buy now. Just. I tell your stupid joke every time I say Worcestershire to my wife, like the, the worst, wor- worst of Shire. Okay, well, the best of Shire. <laughs> it's the worst, worst of Shire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's yeah. like, you're such a dad. I'm like, I know, but I think it's funny. Well, whatever it is, the who's your sister sauce, whatever it is. Yeah. Fucking good though. The whores in the yeah. Shire. Yeah. The whores in the Shire. All right. Uh, so sorry for, sorry for that diversion. Oh, no, that's all right. But yeah. I do, I, I, I do like some meat church recipes. He does good. I mean, and he's, his content's always good. Yeah. And he, he makes it pretty idiot proof. And he always says, you know, you don't have to use meat church seasoning. Use your favorite seasoning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't think meat Mitch is his, is it? No, it's a friend of his. That's yeah. one thing. Is who's, like the W sauce, that's a, a friend of his. The meat Mitch guy is a friend of his. Yep. Well, the W sauce chicken thighs that you did. and I That brought, was his recipe, yeah. Yep, it, yeah I, well, I saw it on there. I just did yours, what you told me. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, he, like, uses other people's stuff. Like, he's just not... I just like people who like know they're good and they're good at it. They don't have to like, oh, you can only use my stuff. Like he's not right. that guy. So like he kind of re- when we were talking to David Young from the yeah right like he they kind of reminded me of that because it's like both of them are like, hey, what I make is really good and I'm not gonna like downplay it. I think it's really good. Everyone else thinks it's really good, but here's a lot of other products out there that are also really fucking good and you should try them. Yeah, which I and, think is like, and what Matt's talking cool about, we're cool. drinking Golden Chief right now. If anybody's wondering, that's well, true. And like, I've talked to, like, I just talked to a, a buddy of mine who met who met him, you know, a year or so ago. Said he's just a freaking nicest guy. Yeah. Like, that's like, I just like people who are like genuine. Like, you can tell me like you're good. Like, I appreciate yeah. that. Like, I'm not going to hold that against you. Yeah. But having that little bit of like humility is also nice. Right. Like confident versus. We should reach out to him for like if he wanted to supply us with like a bottle of bourbon a month, and then we just keep talking about it. Yeah. Well, we'll probably talk about it anyways. But no, we won't. We won't talk about Obviously, it. Obviously, yeah. we're going to move on to something else. <laughs> <laughs> um, but all yeah, right, the, signing day. Oh, yeah, you're all excited about this. Dude, Dylan Raiola. <clears throat> that's a, about, ga- that's that a game Dominic's? changer. It's Dominic's son. So he was picking between us and Georgia earlier in the year. Uh, I think he committed like somewhere like late spring, early summer. And... It was on Monday. I start. I start like uh, Tom. Tom and Norman. I get a text. It's like our old tweet. Like Rayola. Rayola is thinking about Nebraska. Now, mind you, he is one of the top recruits in the country. One of the top quarterbacks in the country. He's legacy. And I was talking with like I was listening to um, sixteen twenty. And they were talking about like there's no way he does this wrong twice. You know, he, he didn't pick us the first time, but I don't think he's going to go through all this. Make make the social media posts and then his dad. For those of you who don't know, is Dominic Rayola, who has his jersey, you know, his number up in the stadium. One of the best offensive linemen that's ever that's ever played in Nebraska. So, to divert a little bit, we went to like the Nebraska camps. I'm sure Did you guys go to the Nebraska camp. Yeah, I went. Yeah, yeah football camp. So we're we're down there and we're at the camp, and a buddy of mine has to take like one of those emergency midday shits. Yeah. And so he goes to the bathroom to take a shit. And the only one they had open was like the actual player locker room shitter. And the way it was set up is there were just a whole bunch of toilets on the wall and just like little concrete walls between them and with toilet paper sitting on top. And so he's in there shitting and Rayola comes in and walks in. He walks all the way down to the one end and like he walks down and he looks at each toilet and sits down at the one next to Ryan. And he's sitting there and he's like, no, this is wrong. I want that one. And like Ryan's sitting on the toilet (laughs) shit and Ryan's like, what and he's like, I want that one move, <laughs> and so <laughs> Brian like gets up and waddles down, and Rayola just stands up butt naked, moves down, sits down in this one, and he's sitting there for a little bit. And he's like, 
No, it's off. Let me try that one. <laughs> so he, he moves him down like four toilets down to the end. And then he gets down to the end. And he's like, nah, I don't have to go. And just walks off. He was, he, 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 that dude, if you don't, if you don't remember, like I'm old, you're old, you're old. Like yeah. He was a mean offensive lineman. Yeah. Like he was mean. Like people did not want to go against him. Right. They talk about he, that in the NF- even in the NFL. Yeah. Like, he's just a fucking. Well, he played for the Lions forever. Right. Like he was just he's mean. A fucking monster. Yeah. So he the one, did he play for the, the? Was he? Did he go to the Dolphins or something and got like kicked off? No, that was someone else. No, oh, that was the bullying dude. What was oh, his that was name? Like, uh, uh, um, you know, talking, the, yeah, I know who you're talking. Yeah, about. trouble in my, college for bullying yeah, in the locker room, and then yeah. Oh, yeah. he got that. Good, uh, oh, fuck! What is his name? He got into so much trouble. That dude was yeah, always in just trouble all the time. But no, that yeah, okay, never mind. Yeah, Rail, Rail, I think, to my knowledge, only played for the Lions. Okay. Which is also didn't uh, Schlesinger went there too? Didn't yep. he? That's another just freaking hard nosed. I know Corey. Corey was friends with my dad. <laughs> when we went to the year I went to Nebraska football camp, um, it was Corey's like first or second year with the Lions. So he came back and was like talking. And he said going down to break the wedge on kickoff. And his face mask got bent in. He got hit so hard. It bro- it, like, it bent it in. That's <laughs> impressive. Yeah. Now they don't hit that hard now. They just flop around on the ground and don't do anything. But I, I, I'm telling you, if the, like that's the game changer. And I think right, like here's the thing about Rule is that I believe Rule wants to build it through high school kids. I think he will take some portal kids. I'm not saying he's not going to. But I think he wants to supplement portal kids with the high school development. And I think this fits better than getting, like, Kyle McCord. Who, I mean, Kyle McCord, would I think, would have been a, a fine quarterback. Um, what happens to Hamburger and Chubba? Well, one of them will probably transfer, if not both. The one I'm kind of worried about, <clears throat> for those of you who don't know, Danny Kalen. He's a Bellevue West quarterback. And he's a freshman. So, like, I think he would I, I don't know that he would come to nebraska you know when you have him so it just kind of depends harburg might stay chubba might go because chubba got enough positive game film that he might build another portal but did you did you guys listen to the pat mcafee show Mm-mm. oh first off crazy motherfucker i do not know so apparently do you know who pat mcafee is yeah he's a punter for the colts Punter for the Colts. And like one of the best punters to ever play the game, actually, the way that guy was like throwing darts out there when he would punt. Yeah. So he apparently built up this like $400 million company and ESPN like basically bought it. And he cusses on ESPN. He says fuck. Like they have a counter of how many days they've gone without saying fuck. I'm like, if there's a disclaimer before his show <laughs> that there will be language. Like, they in his contract, you cannot edit me. You cannot bleep me. We are not changing anything. If you want me, you get me. Well, he also does WWE commentary. Yeah. But then do you know that as part of when he took his own money, I believe, and I think he pays, is it Rogers, Aaron Rodgers and Nick Saban to do, like, weekly spots? So Rogers on there every Tuesday. Yeah, he pays them, which is smart because then he gets into their web of people. Yeah. But I'm pretty okay. sure he pays that. That wasn't, I don't think, from what I heard, ESPN doesn't pay that. He paid that himself. Yeah. To get those guys on regular spots on his show. It's it, like, it, I, I just think it's cool when people become kind of untouchable. Yeah. You know, like you can say what you want. Like Rogan, Rogan's untouchable. Yeah. You can't cancel Rogan. They tried. They tried with the whole fucking like ivermectin and like he's taking horse dewormer. I mean, and, I feel like we're uncancelable. Well, because, because we don't care. <laughs> well, you know, so, but, you know, Rogan is uncancelable, but it was cool the guy at Spotify, the head of Spotify, stayed with him because they, they could have got rid of him. Right, Someone else would have like, picked him up, obviously. I get that, too. But, but he's so big. Yeah, but it was cool that Spotify... Like, Tucker Carlson right now is so big. He's uh, like, you can't cancel Tucker. Like, hate, like, like him, love him, hate him. I don't really care. Like, I just find it really interesting. Like, in this day of age of that following... Like because you can get these little cult followings, you know, but now they're they're digital. They're they're not just a cult following. They're millions of people, millions right. and millions. They get they like like Tucker Carlson, Joe Rogan, Pat McAfee. They have their own fucking brand that's bigger that's bigger than ESPN. I'm not saying McAfee's bigger than ESPN, but he's like, I, take it or leave it. I don't care. Like right. I don't it's need like, I'm you. I'm gonna be successful with or without you. Yeah, like, I don't you need you. Here. Rogan, Rogan will Spotify. Well, if you want to do this, fine. I'll just go somewhere else. Tucker to X. Yeah. Tucker went to X, and now he has his own streaming. Like, 
fine, do it, but I don't need you. And I, I find that I just, I kind of like that. I, like even it. if I don't like the person, I, but I mean, McAfee's kind of a douche. Um, I mean, to be real, I mean, he's kind yeah. of a douche, but I mean, I mean not like, all, Dana White's the same way. Yeah. Dana White, uncancelable. Like it does not matter. Dana White can do say whatever he wants. And he does like he told the Peloton guy to get fucking bent. It doesn't matter. And like, then did you see like a week later? So if, if everybody's another story, so he was on Theo Vaughn's podcast and Theo Vaughn was talking about an advertiser didn't want him to put up his RFK interview because told they were to take get, it down, told him to take it down because they were getting ready to go public. And so he didn't do it. And Dana was like, well, who are you talking about? And, and Theo was like beating around the bush. He's like, ah, oh, I can't remember. And Dana was like, I don't believe you like in the slightest. So finally Theo was like, oh yeah, it was Peloton. And Dana's like, Peloton? And he's like, look this fucking guy up. So if I, they're talking shit about the guy, whatever. The guy who must manage their, CEO. their... But he must manage the gym equipment too oh. or whatever. Dana calls him in because they were doing the podcast from the UFC headquarters. And he goes, what do we got in there? Those Pelotons? He goes, yeah, we got like three or four of them. He goes, throw them on the fucking trash. Fuck that company. And I'm not even kidding. Like a week or two later, Dana now has an ad with it. Is it Echelon? Yeah. Bike company doing an ad for them. <laughs> He's like, I will never bow down to them. And he actually had a really good talk about the Bud Light sponsorship, which I think is pretty cool, like how they did it. And, and he made a good point. And I also listened to, I like to listen to Andy Frisella's podcast, the Real AF podcast. And Dana made like a super good point. He was like, hey man, like those people who work for Bud Light didn't make those decisions. Right. You know, you're, and he's in, and Dana said, Andy, Andy Frisella is out of St. Louis, which is the headquarters of Anheuser-Busch. He's like, you know, we have people who are just hardworking delivery drivers, you know, and, and that was Dana. Dana's like, if you're a real patriot, you should be drinking gallons of Anheuser-Busch products because outside of the stupid thing that these CEOs did, they got everybody upset. You know, that company has done so much for the communities they're in, the, the veterans. You know what I mean? They've done a lot of things, and it's like, how long do you hold them over a barrel? Yeah, well, I mean, for what, for what you're mad about, whether if you're mad or you're not mad about the, the, the Bud Light situation, to each their own on their thoughts on that. Yeah. But Dana was like, dude, you can't, you can't just fucking, you can't, you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Well, and you can't just keep yeah. this fucking cancel culture thing going. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like, you got to right, left, whatever your beliefs are. Like, do people can have different beliefs? You don't have to fucking cancel them, you know? Like, and you can't hold them, hold them guilty forever. So, like, with the Bell Light thing, I thought it was stupid. I thought it was stupid woke bullshit. Like, I thought it was unnecessary. And and I have my whole, whole own personal opinion on all that shit. Um, but I, I can respect. I don't have to agree with Dana White, but that's another thing. Like, I don't have to agree with what he said. I respect the fact that he can say it. You know, like, and yeah. that's the thing with Rogan. I don't agree with everything Rogan says. Rogan, r me and Rogan, disagree, like, our opinions would disagree on a lot of things. But, like, I respect him to say it. And that's yeah. what I like is when you're so big. Like, M McAfee. I think he's kind of a douche. I kind of like him. I mean, not all douchebags are bad. Like, we have... <laughs> I mean, we can all probably be considered a douchebag by some people. Hopefully. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> big old fucking meathead douche. But, like, I just like people who say what they want, who are unapologetic, and that get so big that they can't be canceled. Nothing pisses me off more than when someone says something that they believe. And then th everyone comes out from, like... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, like, be offended. Like Matt Reif. And I'm not saying Matt Reif's there yet, but he's pretty freaking funny. He pissed everyone off right. and then put an official apology out that was a link to a special ed helmet. Like, <laughs> right. like, which you have one of those, right? You have your own helmet. I have two special ed helmets. Yeah, one's, thank over, you very one's much. over here. Yeah, I keep one around just when I'm walking around. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like people who do that, like to me, I, I like I think that's America. Right. And I don't like, care what side yeah. of the, the this isn't even a political thing. I don't care which side you're on. Just believe what you stand for, and obviously be like an be educated in what you stand for. Yeah. But like, just hold to your opinion. You can't. You no one can cancel you if you don't care. Right. You, you know what I mean. Too many people care, but too many people are soft. Yes. And they're all chasing dollars. And they're afraid their dollars are going to go away. So they fucking yeah. apologize for shit that they're not sorry for. I won't apologize for shit I'm not sorry for. I may be sorry that I that I hurt your feelings, but I may, I'm may i not sorry for what I said. Yeah, and it's like, you know, we don't all have the same views on everything. Yeah. I have plenty of people I interact with on a daily basis that don't have the same views I do, but I don't dislike that person. Right. I mean, it is what it is. Like, I, just, I don't care. If you're a good human, I don't really care. Right. Like You can have different views and still. Even if yours are wrong, and I know they are. And I think you're stupid. Doesn't mean I dislike you. 
Like, the, can, chief, like the Chiefs are going to win the Super Bowl again. Or he can be like, oh, fucking Switzerland sitting over here, just right in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> he likes it right in the middle of that man sandwich anyways. Right? Yeah, just fucking skiing. <laughs> anyway, so we were on Pat McAfee, and that really got off on a fucking... Yeah. But, so he was uh, talking about so d- Raiola or something, or what? Uh, McAfee was like McAfee had rule on for 45 minutes freaking great interview and rule talks about a lot of things but um, and he talks about how like a quarterback like the, his interview quarterbacks gonna cost one 1.52 million dollars at a transfer quarterback like like I think that's real and a lot of people got mad at him for saying it it's real life that's how it is it, it is but but I think but rule also said like we have to have players who want to be here to want to be here like you can you can want to make money right and want to be at your place so there may be times where we've all taken jobs or done things that we got paid a little bit less than we could have but we didn't want to work for the other guy and we wanted to work for that person you know and i think that's more in line what rules thinking like hey he's fine with with players getting paid not a big deal but you can't just come here because you want to get paid because it's going to be the biggest check because then someone else is going to offer you just a little bit more and you're like all right cool i'm out yeah, and and I have followed this from w- when I first like owned my own business in two thousand and eight. Like I have followed this. Like you cannot, your goal cannot be money. It can't be money. It, like that can be one of the benefits of achieving your goal, and that could be something that you you like to have. But if your ultimate goal is money, you will never succeed. You won't. You're going to burn out because you're going to make decisions based on money, and sometimes it's more than money. And that's I think that's. Like to your like you were saying you can buy all the players. Yes, fine. Let's just agree that players are being bought. But you have to buy the right ones. And you can't just buy the ones that are just here to get that that five million dollar check. Well, kinda, of, but also look at the NFL. If you get drafted, you gotta go wherever you go and you're getting the paycheck. I think the NFL is different. You're well, and I think sports are different than a business to an extent for players because they're going because they want to win or make a team better. I'm not saying it's always about money with players. But they want to go somewhere and win, and they think that they can make that team better. So they're going to prove a point. You know what I mean? Where in money is obviously a huge byproduct in professional sports. Yes. Yeah. But in like the, the business world, like in the NFL, you can't go and pick like a, a non-NFL team and like, hey, I'm going to build this thing up to be an NFL team. But like the corporate world, you can see like you don't – they could be like a giant company out there offering you a ton of money, and you're like, I don't want to work for them. And you can go work for a smaller company. You can build them up to be as big or bigger than so you can chase like the desire and the passion knowing that the money will come but the nfl like you're kind of there's only that's what i was saying you have to go you don't have a choice you don't have a choice but so like we're saying like you can say well i don't want kids who want to be here Uh, but that's and like i've told i feel like college is going to turn into nfl ish to an extent here but but you're in two different things one you can transfer once in college for free you can't do that in the nfl well okay so here's the problem with the nfl now they let these players who are under contract demand trades how many times have you seen people demand a trade but i've also seen people i've also seen players sit out and not get paid well i know but so then then they'll end up getting traded where they you know what i mean so it's the problem is is like the nfl has let it get out of hand where it should be like you're contractually playing like i think if you sit out and you don't play on your contractual agreement you should have to sit out the whole next year in the nfl like you're ineligible to play for another team like that should be a group of owners you know what i mean but like so they really have full control of their destiny i don't want to play here too bad, dude. Yeah, but only the thing about the NFL, there's only a handful of players can do that. I mean, we mm-hmm. like we we hear about them. They're on ESPN, but most players cannot say trade mm-hmm. me. You have five. Oh no, I know, yeah. but I, you, I still you, I still don't think it's okay. But you have five people at you have five people at Apple who can do that. You have five people at Google who could do that. Say fucking pay me or I'm out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because, but they're not. But they're probably not under contract. You got. I mean, like you agreed to an amount of money under contract. I, so some people outperform their contracts, right? And especially most of the time that we're talking about people holding out, it's almost always running backs. And, and you know what? Then, like I said, then you should, you keep out, you know, it's the uh, under promise and over deliver. You keep showing up, you fucking tear it up. So when your next con- Joe Flacco, Joe Flacco bet on himself. Remember, he could have signed a contract at the beginning of the year and he said, no, let's wait. He wins the Super Bowl, gets 120 million, never does anything again. Well, like you have players, I think LeBron, which I, once again, I think LeBron's a giant douchebag. So I'm not a LeBron fan. But for a while there, I think he was just on one-year contracts. Well, he, like, he changed every fucking team. He's like, I just got no loyalty to any Yeah, but team. I think he was just on one-year contracts. Like, he's like, basically, he's betting on himself every year. You know what I mean? Like, fine. Like, I don't have any guaranteed money, but I'm going to get as much guaranteed money this year. 
So, so, but the whole rule interview, I thought rule was awesome on McAfee. I really am excited. Like, I think Nebraska does have a chance. I, I like next year. I I'm still seven and five or better. And I'm going to, I'm going to hedge on the side of better. Um, I hope so too. And moving forward though, like, I just think rule, like, I think rule has a plan. I think rule has a plan. I like his plan. And he's, I mean, if he can get, if he can get a, I don't think Nebraska's ever had a five-star quarterback. That's not true. Didn't they have that kid out of San Francisco that came and he came early and then he never played. A five-star quarterback. Yeah. Wasn't that kid out of San Francisco? He came early in the year. He came before season, like a semester early. Um, what was that kid's name? It was probably four years ago. Was it under Riley? Yes. Um, he wasn't five star, it was four. Sorry. Four. No, but you know what I'm talking about though, and then he never did anything. So for those of you who don't know, there are only thirty two five stars in every class. There's only thirty two five star players out of all the high school players in the country for twenty twenty four class, there's only f- thirty two five stars. And basically it's one for every first round draft pick in the NFL. That's how they do it. Mm. Okay, so so there's so there's that's that's a high bar. Like think about how many kids play football in the, in Omaha, and we're talking about there's only 32 in the country. How many five star quarterbacks have made it in the NFL? Uh, when it comes to quarterbacks and when it comes to NFL, star ratings do matter. I mean, I'm asking this yeah. a logical question. I don't know how many have actually made it. I don't know. I I, I would Ask say Tom. Yeah, Tom would know. I mean, there's plenty that phase out. There's plenty that fizzle out, like Jamarcus Russell. And I told some kid here the other day, like Jamarcus Russell was a flop, and he looked at me like, who the fuck's Jamarcus Russell? I'm like, I am not. Yeah, oh, exactly. I am that old. <laughs> I am that old. God damn it. Yeah, you are old. I know. You know who Jamarcus Russell is, though. No. LSU quarterback. Went to the Raiders. Flop, floppity flop. Oh, yeah. It's because he went to the Raiders. That's why nobody knows who he is. <laughs> <laughs> by the Raiders the way, is like going to the Jets. He just goes there to fucking Yeah, die. by the way, the Raiders were ahead 63-7 to seven on the Chargers the other night. <laughs> yeah, and that guy from the Chargers did the old first down celebration. I was like, eh, a, little late, a little late for that. Man, this celebrations when people are getting their ass kicked cracked me up. Like, I just like to watch... Bro. Did I just like to watch... <laughs> You know, like the first quarter celebrations, and as they start getting beat, they just like the demise, like the sadness in their face. Like they just like they'll score a touchdown, they just like give the ref the ball, and they just like walk off. Like there's like no celebration anymore. Like it is kind of cool when someone just gives because who was uh, there was a running back who would just hand the ref the ball, like no celebration. I always thought that was cool. We did that with all of our kids. Like they would get they would get unless there was like a time sensitive issue. Like we always had like hey if you do something act like you've done it before. Give the ball to the official, and get back to work. Oh, if see, so cool. so our flag football team's not the best. <laughs> like we don't have a bunch of stats, man. If they <laughs> if they do something, I'm like fucking cheer, dude. Yeah, like, get after <laughs> it. You get after it. Get after like you get, the end zone, the you get the end zone. You get the You spike that ball. You do a little gritty. I don't really care yeah, what you, you do. You punch the we'll, kid next to we'll, you. We'll, we'll take the penalty because <laughs> <laughs> because mom has no pictures of you scoring touchdowns. <laughs> we'll we'll go ahead and take that one. <laughs> I told I, I did tell one of the kids, bigger kid, and, I, and our flag football team, like we have to rotate positions. Okay, so everyone has to play every position. Yeah, it's still it's, it was still fifth grade, so like I'm fine with it. But we had a kid who has no business, no business playing receiver. <laughs> okay, and he went out and uh, and he like dropped he dropped one. It was he was wide open. And he dropped it. And I'm like I'm like your mom was been waiting for that picture all year. I was like you get it open, you catch that freaking ball. <laughs> And then during the game, that was during practice, during the game, he caught it. And he looked at me. He's like, I caught it. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> cheer. Fucking put your hands up. Spike that ball. You do whatever you want. I'll take the penalty. <laughs> so if they get Raiola, what do you think? They obviously need more than just a quarterback. Well, we have we have two really good freshman receivers. I'm talking about offensive line. Our offensive line was not that bad last year. It wasn't. Statistically, it wasn't bad. Like, on the games, it wasn't bad. It was not that bad, especially towards the end of the year. It was pretty solid. And if you put Corcoran, who I know you hate fucking Turner Corcoran, but he's been playing left tackle, and he's not a tackle. He is not a tackle. He 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 is a guard. If you move Corcoran, if you have Prohaska on the left, and Ben Hart came back, and Ben Hart played exceptionally well this year for getting – he was the whipping boy of the offensive line for the last three or four years. He's coming back next year. You put him on right tackle, you have Prohaska on left, and you move Corcoran over to to guard, like you have pretty solid. Rayola did way better 
with um, with offensive line last year. But we've also gotten uh, Bricks, which is a four star uh, four star tackle out of uh, uh, Iowa. Uh, I think we have like three or four four star, or sorry, two or three four star linemen that are in this class. Because uh, there's nothing more that Rule wants is to have an offensive and defensive line. Like he knows that's where it's at. And we have um, Ty Robinson and uh, Nash Hotmacher coming back next year on the defensive lines. Nash Hotmacher is a giant human. So, so is Ty Robinson. I know. And then he wears that number zero. Yeah. And it makes him look even bigger. Yeah. So when you but, wear a single digit and you're like 400 pounds. Well, they makes both you look wear ma- single digits. I know he wears nine. What Ty's nine. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it makes you look even more massive. So both those guys coming back like D line, and then you have guys behind them, um, Cam Lenhart and uh, uh, Van Poppel that that are also good. Like you have young, they have young people behind them that that can that uh, our coach uh, White played a ton of players on defense. There, I you know I I watch every Nebraska game. I listen to Nebraska, you know, recruiting talk on radio. I listen to sixteen twenty like. I feel like I'm fairly well educated. There are times where I'm like, who in the fuck is that? Like, I don't even know that guy's name. <laughs> you know, like White played a ton of people and he got his contract extension. Like we were talking, we talked to a couple weeks ago, which is good. He got his contract extension. Um, so he'll be here for at least a year or two. Um, I hope he moves on to a head coaching job. I really do. But I would like to have him here for two or three years. So someone underneath him understands this concept a little bit better and then they can just roll in. And that's another thing that I like about Rule. He he promotes from within. Like a lot of his a lot of his coaches, like he'll have a GA. He'll be like, "You don't have a spot here yet, but I want. I think you're going to be good. Go go coach for these for for this school. Get two years of experience. Go ahead and if you want, move on or come back. Like he is all about his coaches being better. He's all about the kids being better, having more opportunities. I think it's going to play well. I I just I think he's the guy, and I think you're going to see this recruiting class. Because Wednesday, I haven't been re- I haven't been excited for a recruit like a signing day in a while. Wednesday could be wild because if Rayola if Rayola does come here, and I I think he will, like Wednesday could be wild. Like you could end up with some other big names some that other are names following. Yeah, because everyone wants to play with a five star quarterback. I mean, he's at the Elite Eleven. I think camp. he'll start next year. Yeah, he'll start next year. As a true freshman. Yep. So did Adrian. So I was talking with Tom once again, fucking Rain Man, um, and because like C.J. Stroud, I think only threw two passes as as a freshman, you know, and he was great. Like, but they had a, they also had a bunch of quarterbacks. Like Ohio State's had a quarterbacks for years. Uh, Justin Fields, I don't think played as a freshman, but then Tom was going through. It's like, well, uh, Trevor Lawrence did this, and um, uh, Tua came in and replaced Hertz as a freshman. You know, like, so I think there's there's a split. I, th- I think you can start. I think there's plenty of examples of freshmen starting and end up being really good. And there's plenty of examples of sitting a year or two and then becoming good. So I don't know that it really matters. But I uh, he's starting. There's no fucking way that Har- Heimlich Hamburger or Chava Purdy is going to beat him out for the, <laughs> the starting job. Oh, and something that you'll be happy with, you know how many interceptions he threw last year in high school? And he was in, he was in uh, Buford, Georgia, outside of Atlanta, kind of a powerhouse, like like high, like upper class, you know, like mm-hmm. class A around here. You know how many interceptions he threw last year? Less than Sims. One. He threw one interception last year. He had great year. receivers. No, he did not have great Prove receivers. His, his, his receivers were good, but they were all undersized. He, he did not have, like, the stud. Like, even last year with Casey Thompson, say what you want about Casey Thompson being good, bad, or otherwise. Like, at the end of the day, close your eyes and throw it up and let Trey Palmer go and get it. Trey Palmer's playing for the Bucks. Like, he was, like, it's kind of like Randy Moss. He's Trey's down there somewhere. Randy's down there somewhere. Chuck it up and let him go find it. <laughs> we didn't have that this year. True. We did not have that. Uh, hamburger better figure it out, though, otherwise his girlfriend's probably gonna get rid of him. I think hamburger should be a tight she end. Should. I think hamburger should be a tight end. He's fast. He 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 he's not fast at getting up to speed. I have never seen anyone go from zero to sixty slower than hamburger. Like he is slow through the hole. He is not, like he's fast straight away. Like if he didn't if, if he didn't have a release and he was starting like a tight end spot, I think he's fast. But like going through a hole and like trying to make a decision. 
It's like fucking it's like mud. <laughs> like well, I, think it's just, I think it's the decision making. If he was just running a route, I think he's fast. Yeah. He's going to, cause he's just going to go at it top speed. Yeah. But I wouldn't mind seeing like, I, 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 I love Nebraska kids. You know, I like, like I want Nebraska kids to play on our team just like in the nineties. Like we had a lot of Nebraska kids on the team and then we had Tommy Frazier. You had Abdul Muhammad. You had uh, Lawrence Phillips. But then you also had Amon Green. You also had Damon Benning. You know, you 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 mixed in. You sprinkled in some out of state kids with a good core of in state kids. And I think that's what they're doing now. Yeah, it'll be good. We'll see what happens. So I guess if you post this on Wednesday or after Wednesday, when signing day, you can say, "Well, Tanner was wrong as fuck," <laughs> or right. Listen to Tanner be so wrong. <laughs> I mean, this is kind of ballsy to do before <laughs> signing day. <laughs> Yeah, this will probably be up Friday, so we'll know. Yeah. We'll come back and edit it. Yeah. I'll just go over. You are wrong. <laughs> mwah, mwah, mwah. Yeah. If you go back and you're going to go back and edit one of every one of my points, they're just going to go back and put the sound over it. Like Tanner was wrong. The, the Tanner being wrong counter is up to. <laughs> yep. At least it's not me anymore. The town, the, we'll the just have a Tanner was wrong counter on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's probably going to be pretty high. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, this will come out Friday, uh, 22nd? 22nd, Second, yeah. Yep. So right before Christmas. So um, I guess we got anything else on any signing day stuff? What's going to happen? Mm. We can review the Chiefs probably go to the Super Bowl. Um, I don't know who in the AFC will go to the Super Bowl, though. I, I think you have a hard time betting against them just because they're the ones that have done it. They've been to, what, four straight AFC championships? Yeah, so it'll probably be, I would guess, the Niners or Cowboys, and then Taylor Swift will be in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Maybe. We'll see. Taylor Swift's team, her boyfriend's team. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Kelsey's such a tool. Dude, I tried listening to their podcast. Today. It's it fucking good, great. I, you liked it? I like it. I think, I it's, think it sounds like a, it sounds so fake. Like when they talk to each other, it's like, hey, brother, how was your weekend? Like, <laughs> I think I, I, I here's the thing. I like Ka- Travis Kelsey, the tight end. Travis Kelsey, the person annoys the fucking shit out of me. And I hate the Eagles. So I just don't like his brother. Yeah. No. You know, what's really funny. Mason's fucking great. I think he's the better one on the on the podcast. It just seems like a giant advertisement the whole time. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Like, I, mean, bustin- I actually stuff. like busting with the boys better. Yeah. Have you listened to them? Mm-mm. That's pretty solid. That's Will Compton and uh, who's the other dude that's on there? Uh, who's offensive the, lineman? I uh, played for like the Titans. But busting with the boys is pretty decent yeah. though. But they just go do a whole bunch of crazy shit and then they talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will say that I've never been an Eagles hater, but like being friends with you, like now that like, you hate them so much, it's rubbed off on me now. I'm like, fuck the Eagles. <laughs> that's, good. that's good. They're fucking terrible people. <laughs> So with all that hate, uh, we want to wish everybody Merry Christmas because this will be out <laughs> right before. Uh, we appreciate you guys hanging with us with since like March we started doing this. Um, but I hope you guys have safe and happy uh, holidays. Merry Christmas with your family, family and friends. Or if you don't have any family or friends, I guess whatever. By yourself. Yeah. Sit around yourself and listen. a bottle of Golden Sheaf and hang out in your basement. And listen to our podcast. Yeah. yeah. But now we appreciate you guys listening. Um, share it, like it, comment, uh, set us up for auto download, tell your friends. Um, but yeah, from all of us here, have a, have a Merry Christmas. We appreciate you guys.